Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to continue to look at some using some calculator um, shortcut techniques to calculate probabilities and inverse probabilities from a normal distribution. But in this video, we're also going to illustrate our results both on the CDF and PDF for the normal distribution. So just to recall, on the TI calculators, whether that's a TI Inspire or TI-84, you're going to use norm CDF or normal CDF uh, A, B, mu, N to calculate the probability that X is between A and B from a normal distribution with mean mu and, and uh, standard deviation uh, that should be say sigma. So you're going to use inverse norm where you put in the probability to the left mu and sigma where P is the probability that X is less than the desired X value we're looking for, the output, to convert in compute inverse probability. So use norm CDF or normal CDF for probability. Use inverse norm for um, inverse probabilities. If we have to use infinity or negative infinity, unless you're on a TI uh, Inspire, you're going to need to use something else. And even if you are on a TI Inspire, we can use something else. We can use mu minus 10 sigma for negative infinity and mu plus 10 sigma for infinity. You do not have to use such shortcuts as a normal PDF or shade normal unless you want to see the graphical representation uh, on the PDF. So the following examples we will use the methods above mainly norm CDF and inverse norm uh, to calculate probabilities and inverse probabilities and I'll show you the screenshots from both the TI-84 and the TI Inspire. And then we'll also use a TI Inspire and some of the more advanced things on the TI Inspire uh, to illustrate both of these uh, probabilities and inverse probabilities and so forth uh, on both the PDF and the CDF graphs together. Notice that the visualizations are not necessary for problem solving. We can just do this with just the numerical results. However, it is pretty useful sometimes to think of the visualizations uh, either of the CDF or PDF or both uh, to help us kind of get a feel for what's going on with the probabilities. They can be helpful. So basically I'm going to do a, an example of each of the main types here. So in all the examples we're going to do in this vid particular video we're going to let X be normal uh, random variable with a mean 27 and a standard deviation of 3. We're going to do a between probability, probably that X is between 25 and 30. A left tail probability, probability that X is less than 24. A right tail probability, probability that X is greater than 36. And then an, what I'll call a two tail probability, probability that X is less than 22 or X is greater than 32. Basically, pretty much all the probabilities will fall into one of those four categories. And then we can do some inverse probability problems. I'm going to give you three types there as well. Uh, so we have a probability that X is less than A is 0.99. That's where we're giving the left probability and we want to find the X value. So that's an inverse left probability. And then the next one is a right probability. We want to do an inverse with the right probability. So the probability that X is greater than B is 0.75 find B. And then sometimes we have a situation like this when we have something that's centered up on the mean. Where we go mean minus C uh, to mean plus C. And we will find the probability that X is between there and find C. So X is between 27 minus C and 27 plus C equals 0.95. See if we can find not just the 27 plus C and the 27 minus C, but actually find what the C is. Okay, so let's see if we can do these. You should know enough at this point to at least be able to compute these. And then let's, if you would, do those computa computations before you go on to see the answers, check them, and look at the visualizations. So see if you can do this first one now. What's the probability that X is between 25 and 30? Press pause, come back when you have an answer. Well, if you have the TI-84, you're going to see basically this screen right here. You're going to do normal CDF, which is uh, second and, uh, well, I'll just I'll just do it here. You do it this way, you go distributions, which is second, and variables. It's going to be normal CDF, which is number two. 
you're going to give it a lower of 25, upper of 30, a mean of uh, 27, and a standard deviation of 3. And hit paste. If you have the older calculator where that screen, this uh, screen doesn't come up, it'll just say normal CDF, open parentheses. You have to type in an order, lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation. And then, of course, hit enter. And there's our probability, which is right there. On a TI Inspire, it works very similarly. Use norm CDF, uh, which is from menu, probability, uh, and so forth. Let me, I can go ahead and put this one in too. So you can go, uh, let's just clear that out. So you can go menu, probability, distributions, normal CDF, it's also number two. And we want to go from uh, 25 to 30 with a mean of 27 and a standard deviation of 3. Works basically like the Inspire, uh, Inspire and TI-84 work basically the same. And there we have our, our uh, distribution. So we have uh, our probability there is about 0.58885. And I have the graph drawn here. Uh, I, grew, I drew a little bit more on this than just basically comes straight out of the calculator. But the blue graph down here is our normal PDF uh, of X with the mean 27 and standard deviation of 3. So there's the PDF. I chose an appropriate window. Looks like I'm going like from 12 to 42 here and from about negative 0.2 to 1.1 on the Ys. For our window, we graphed a nice little bell-shaped curve there. And then... For F2, I put the normal CDF uh, from negative infinity up to X, uh, mean 27, standard deviation 3. Instead of negative infinity here, I, I use mu minus 10 sigma. Part of the reason why I use 10, it's easy to, easy to uh, do a multiplication here. 10 times 3, just move the decimal one place to right. That makes that 30. 27 minus 30 is negative 3. And that's going to be plenty good enough because to the left of uh, 10 standard deviations there's so little probability out there that we can ignore it it doesn't show up in any of the digits that we're going to be getting out of our calculator so we can then see the area as the shaded region between those between x is 25 and x is 30 under the pdf curve so x equals 25 and x equals 30 and the x-axis are boundaries and the top boundary is the pdf curve and the shaded area there is 0.5889. We can see it on the CDF graph, the same thing as this red vertical distance, which is the difference in the two Y values here. So find the two Y values at the two points above X equals 25 and X equals 30 and subtract. So technically speaking, this norm CDF is not truly a CDF. It's actually a difference in two CDFs because CDF of, of 30 would be the Y value up here and CDF of um, 25 would be the Y value here. This norm CDF, uh, normal CDF over here, 25 comma 30, 27, 3, is the difference in those two CDF values, which is this vertical distance here. So this red distance is the same as this area, is the same as this, this output of this function, which is the same as the probability we're looking for. So there's a between probability. See if you can do a left-tailed one now. What's the probability that x is less than 24? When you have an answer, come back. Press pause now. Well, that's just a normal CDF. Again, I, I worked out something instead of negative infinity. I would do mean minus 10 times the standard deviation is negative 3. And that did a normal uh, CDF from negative 3 up to 24 with a mean 27 standard deviation of 3. And there's the probability there. There's the same thing on the um, Inspire T84 here. How is that visualized over here? Well, again, we have the same normal curve and CDF curve that we had in the last screen, the last slide there. But when we're talking about a probability less than 24, we find 24 on the x-axis, and we shade under the PDF curve 
to the left of that. So this actually goes on forever, although pretty soon it's so small we can ignore it. This area right here is our probability, which is 0.1587. And it's the same as this vertical distance here, which is the same as the Y value right here on this, on this uh, CDF curve. So the Y value on the CDF curve is the cumulative probability. It is the height above the X axis, that red length. And that's the same as this area under the PDF curve, which is the same as the probability that we're looking for. So that's how we can illustrate a left tail probability on both the CDF and PDF. How about a right tail probability? What's the probability that X is greater than 36? Work this one out, come back and check it. Press pause now. Well, you'll see that again, uh, well, we want to go to infinity, uh, but we can't put an infinity in a TI-84, so we'll do mu plus 10 times sigma. Uh, that's 57. So I go from 32 to 57 and with a mean of 27 and a standard deviation of 3, and I get 0 0.04779, and you get the same thing on the Inspire there. The way this is seen on the graph over here is we find uh, 32 on the x-axis, go up to the PDF curve, and go across to the right in shade. So the shaded area here is our 0 0.0478. That's the probability uh, that we got over here. The way to see it on the CDF graph is we go all the way up to 1 above this and then go from 1 down to the, to the, cur to the CDF curve. Or in other words, from the CDF curve up to y equals 1, that vertical distance is a distance of 0 0.0478, which is the same as this area here, which is the same as the probability which we found by this computation here in the calculator. All right, how about a two-tailed probability? X is less than 22 or X is greater than 32. Come back when you have an answer. Press pause now. Well, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. I just have the screen here for the um, TI uh, Inspire here. I'll add the 84 screen here to it in just a second. Uh, 1 minus norm CDF of 22 to 32 would probably be the easiest way. In other words, it's 1 minus the probability that X is between the two. And that turns out to be that way. Or you could do uh, the probability of the left one and the left tailed and the right tailed and add them together. Here I actually use negative infinity infinity uh, in the inputs here because I can do that on a on an Inspire uh, cast. And so I did that and worked out. But you get the same answer either way. So there's two ways to do that. Let, let me work that one out. Le, I'll work it out. Uh, the first way on uh, TI Inspire, which is where I probably, uh, or 84, which is the way I probably do it. 1 minus uh, distribution normal CDF, and we want to go between 22 and 32. So between 22 and 32 is the part that we don't want. So this is what we're going to subtract from 1, and that gives us our probability there. Okay, so there's the uh, TI-84 screen there now. And over here in the picture, we can kind of see what this works out to be. Uh, this is actually two separate areas added together. So here I have the two tailed areas uh, shaded. You can kind of see why these are called tails. They kind of go out on the ends, kind of like a tail. And there are two of them, so there are two tails here, a tail to the left and a right tail together. And each of those, um, well... Because I have this centered up where the mean is exactly halfway between these two, it turns out these two tails have the same area. They wouldn't necessarily have to have the same area if they're not symmetric, if they're not centered up on the mean. But uh, in this case, they do. Uh, it is centered on the mean, so they do have the same area. So again, I have in blue the normal PDF. I go to the right of 32 and find an area of 0 0.0478 to the left of 22 is 0 0.0478 and add those two together you get 0 0.0956 say so if you go that far out which is what we have here this red air red length from z from the x-axis up to the cdf curve corresponds to above 22 right here is the same as this area here on the left tail. 
The area on the right tail is represented by the distance from the CDF up to the line Y equals 1, which is what we have right across the top here. And of course, adding those two red links together is the same as adding these two areas together, which is the same as adding the two probabilities together, which is what we want. Okay, so let's switch to an, an, an inverse normal problem, inverse probability problem. So here we have the probability that x is less than a, it's 0.99, find a. Use your calculator to find the answer, come back and check when you're done. Press pause now. Well, to find inverse probabilities, we can use a built-in inverse norm because, because we have it. We can use it, it's pretty cool. So we just do inverse norm. Let me go ahead and actually just show you that uh, on the TI-84, for example. It's just second varies for distributions, it's number three. Inverse normal, when it says area, that means it's talking about this shaded area right here, which is the area under the PDF graph to the left. It could have said Y value and been talking about the CDF as well, or it could have been, or it could have just said cumulative probability, which is what I wish it would actually say, but uh, that cumulative probability is 0.99. The mean on this one was, once it's the same mean as we've been using, let's see, 27 and then 3 for the standard deviation. Hit paste and there we go. That's the x value that goes with this. So that's the x value right there. Well you can see the ordered pair right up above his 33.979 and uh, y value is 0.99 so the probability to the left is 0.99. We did these before by graphing a horizontal line at y equals 0.99, which is what I've done here. And notice where that crosses the graph, the x value is the what this is giving us here. And of course, that's that means that the probability to the left of that, which is given by either this y value, 0.99, or this vertical length, red length, 0.99 units long, or this area here, also 0.99, those are all the same. That's the cumulative probability. Of course, that's what was given to us. The thing that we didn't know up front was what this x value is right here, which we see is 33.979, which is the output here. And that's uh, that should say 3 instead of 13, which is why that number's wrong. Let me fix that. Okay, so uh, there we go. We have that fixed, and you can see that illustration there as well okay let's try another one this time we have the probability that x is greater than b is 0.75 can we find b go ahead and work that out come back when you have an answer now remember that the inverse norm you have to put in the probability that x is less than uh, b and of course, if x, the probability that x is greater than b is 0.75, you put 1 minus 0.75 or 0.25 is what you put in for the, well, it, asks, it calls it area here, which is an area to the left, the unshaded area here under the PDF graph is 0.25, uh, mean is 27, standard deviation is 3. So that says the x value that goes with that is 24.977. So the x value is 24.977, the area to the right, which is shaded, is our 0.75. To the left, the unshaded area under the PDF curve is 0.25. So the way we, and of course you do the same thing up here on the Inspire. And the way we do that on the graph, where you see that on the graph is that to the right of that 24.977, we see an area under the PDF of 0.75. Or from the uh, CDF, we go from that curve up to 1 we see a length of 0.75 there. Okay, and of course that's 1 minus the y value here. The y value down here is the 0.25. So notice that what we do, of course, is we graph y equals 0.25 and find out where that crosses the, the uh, CDF curve. That's another way we did it before. Okay, so we can see it that way. All right, now, because of the symmetry of what's going on, we sometimes want to know 
a, a situation like this one where we take our mean which is 27 in this case and we go uh, subtract C and add C and we want to find the probability that X is between those two numbers Oh, actually we know the probability that X is between those two numbers is 0.95 and here we want to find uh, not just the 27 plus C and the 27 minus C but mainly what the C is how far we're going each direction this one takes a little bit more thought but I think you can work this one out press pause now and try it well if we because of the symmetry of what's going on here if we are, we're centered up on the mean we go C units below and above the mean to some new X values and we get an area of 0.95 we're looking at an area like this under the PDF the centered up on the mean right here of 27 we're going the same distance left and right which is this red distance right here that's what we're looking for is that red distance so that gives us uh, mu plus C to mu minus C and a total area of 0.95 now to work this out though what are we going to do well 0.95 divided by 2 is 0.475 so from here uh, this left half is 0.475 the right half is 0.475 so I'm looking at the right half and saying okay well how much is below this well I know it's one half from this point down and then I'm going to add this other 0.475 to get 0.975 or another way to think about this is is this is 0.95 is this area that leaves 0.05 for the outside area, the two-tailed area, which because we're centered up exactly symmetric on the mean, and this is symmetric distribution, that 0.05 is in two halves, at least 0.025 over here and 0.025 here. So we could add the 0.95 and 0.025 to get 0.975, or we could do 1 minus the 0.025 that's over here to get 0.975 but either way we go we need to see how much is to the left of this value right here which is 27 plus C and so that's where I drew my horizontal line at 0.975 and I want to calculate that X value which turns out to be about 32.88 okay then I know that's 27 plus C so C is 32.88 minus the 27, which is about 5.88. So another way to look at it is this. Uh, so this is half of this is, is 0.475. To the left of this, this place where we're looking for, not quite what we're looking for, but the 27 plus C is going to be an inverse norm of 0.975273. Solving for C, we're just subtracting 27 to both sides. So C is... The inverse norm of 0 0.975 comma 27 comma 3 minus the 27 leaves us about 5.88. Okay, here it is down here. And so what we what this says is that if I go about 5.88 to the right here, I get 32.88, and 5.8 to the left gives me about 21.12. The area between those two is 0 0.95, as you see here. The C is just that distance from here to here, which is the 5.8. Eight, and of course the the pro total probability that we're looking for on the CDF version is the y value here at the right end. The right end is 32.88. Take its y value, which is 0.975, minus the y value here on the on the right end, on the left end, which is 21.12. Its y value is there, which is 0.025. And of course, subtract those two, you get this blue length here, which is, of course, 0.95. So, uh, I, if you look at this, we've done all the basic different kinds of probability questions. We've done um, we've done a between probability, which we can see as an area shaded in between, or a difference in two y values, or that vertical distance. That's just a norm CDF put the two values in we've done a left tail probability which is a vertical distance here or y value in the CDF which is an area shaded to the left a left tailed to do that we needed to plug in well negative infinity but we could use mean minus 10 standard deviations instead of negative infinity and work that out 
with the norm CDF. Probability of x greater than 36 was a probability to the right. That's a right-tailed area here, or a vertical distance from the CDF up to the to the to the uh, y equals one curve. Okay, and we could do that with a normal CDF going from our number up to infinity. If we want a probability of two tails, we find the two tails and add them together. Or we can do 1 minus the between probability here, which is probably a little bit easier. That's the way I did it there. For a, If we're given a left-tailed probability we want to find the A value, the X value, then we just use an inverse norm. If we're given a right-tailed probability, we first subtract that probability from 1 and then do an inverse norm. And in this special case, where we're going for both sides here, we had to do a little bit more manipulation to work this out, but we were able to get uh, this distance that we're going above and below the mean. So those are pretty much about the only kinds of problems that you're going to end up working. Most normal calculations turn out to be one of those things. So part of the point of this video was showing you how we could illustrate these. Sometimes it's very useful to draw at least the, maybe the PDF curve and shade it in, even if it's not exactly right. Or you might draw it in the CDF and, and, and draw that in if, it, if that helps you better. Uh, so, or you could do both like I've done here. But it's not necessarily, for exa example, to do this and get this all worked out with the calculator and graphed and everything. Actually, all of the calculations can be done strictly from the home screen as you see over here. But the illustrations do uh, help us visualize it and understand them a little bit better.